it's time to dish with D. That's me. Thank you for clicking on this video and making yourself a priority. I am Denise. It is Wednesday. And Wednesday is Wednesday Wisdom for Weight Loss from a WW Lifetime member. You guys submit your questions and I answer them rapid firely as best I can. Remember, before I say this before all video, if I don't, I should. These are just my opinions. You could totally disagree with me if you do, if you want. Again, these are just what I think, how I feel, how I approach things. It's just an opinion. I love that we can talk about it, we could share it, and we could express ourselves and not be in arguments. I don't like when you see people arguing online. I don't like that. So, you guys submitted some questions. But I'm going to read two from last week's post. Um, how do you deal with Weight Watchers, your journey, and grief? That's a hard one because we all deal with grief in our own way. We do. It's, it's, it's a process. That's why I will say grief is a process. And how we process it is different. There is there a right and wrong to process grief? There's not. We're all different. Some people <clears throat> cry. Some people fight through it. Some people get angry. Some people eat. Some people don't eat. So there, there's a lot of things. You have to find out what your way of processing it is. And say it's eating because we're talking about weight loss. Maybe that could be it. Maybe that's the question. Is it okay to eat if I'm grieving? I'm not going to sit here and ever tell anybody that they're wrong for eating. You know, it, you might think that's like a horrible thing to say. That You should sit there and tell her not to eat. If that's how she's processing her grief, I can't sit there and take that away from somebody. Um, so I would say if eating is what's consuming you now because of your grief, maybe don't have the things in there that are killers like cookies and cakes and chocolate. Fill your house with things like fruit. I know fruit. That's just like a kind of come down from all the other things. I know. But rice cakes, flavored rice cakes, there's chocolate, there's cinnamon, there's nut butters. Nut butters, yes, they're high in fat, but they're tasty and they satisfy that yearn for something sweet. So if you don't have those foods around, you can't eat them. So try to keep things in there that are better options, but you're going to gravitate towards chips. It's your thing with Doritos. Get poppables, popcorners, pop chips in little individual bags. Yes, you might open three bags, but that's only like 12 points when you think about it. So as opposed to the whole entire big bag, which you could eat the whole bag. So I would say have things like that. And if food is what you need, food is what you need. But remember, make that decision saying, am I okay with this? I may gain weight through this grief. Now that may make you more grief stricken thinking, oh, I'm, I'm grieving and now I'm eating and it's going to make my journey worse. Think about it. Talk to yourself. Talk to the group. Put your grief out there. Say, hey, I'm suffering here. I'm drowning. And somebody will throw you the life preserver and say, hey, I got you. You know what? Talk to us express yourself. Sometimes grief is something we hold in. So sometimes when we release it, it helps. So that would be my advice. All right. This is another controversial, which is I love handling. When you scan something versus when you put it in the calculator, you come up with different points. Most times I find that when the calculator and the scanner differ, it's usually a point difference. It's never like five points. Um, Here's my bottom line for that. And we talked about it in the, in the chat last night. Are you going to put everything in the calculator? Because if that's what you want to do, that's up to you. Like I said, it's all personal. If like, personal points, that's why I like, I kind of like the idea of the plan, but it just didn't work. But it's a personal thing. If, if that's what you want to do, then that's what you do. I personally am not going through the whole tech. I mean, granted, it's easier now because it does scan the label. Like, you, you don't have to match. But, you know, it always misses something, you know. So, you're always putting something in. For me, I trust the scanner. Has the scanner been wrong? Yes. I'm going to sit there and give full just Yeah, it's going to be wrong. I, I'm not going to sit there and say it's perfect. But I have to trust that because that is what I'm choosing to do. You have to decide what you want to do. You want to believe the scanner? Or do you want to put everything in the calculator? That's a decision that you have to make. My own little two cents is most times it's off by a point. Like I think these are one of the things these legendary food that scan at one point difference versus the calculator. 
I'm, I'm going to be like, I might get criticized for this, but I don't think a point's going to make or break my journey. See, that's where I have this. It's not five points. I've never seen anything differ from five points. So I'm going to sit there and say, I'm trusting the scanner for convenience. I do it because it's quick. I do points because they're quick. It's something I choose to do. So whatever you choose to do, then you do it. I wouldn't do both. Either you use calculator or you use scanner. To do both defeats the purpose of using one, in my opinion. The only time I use a calculator is when it comes up with nothing. It's not in the database. So then I have to use the calculator because I need to know what the points are because I have no idea what the points are. But I don't worry about a point. I don't, I mean, we have weeklies and I always keep an, a, a, an excess of weeklies aside for stuff like that. And I'm not eating that much stuff that I scan anyway. So it's not like I'm eating 18 things a day that I have to scan. So I look at it that way as well. So again, it's a personal decision for anybody. All right, these are the questions from the group. They were the ones that were from the video. What are the best sweeteners for the glycemic index? Now, from what I hear, again, not a professional, not even close. Um, I would say everything you put, everything that you read about for every product is going to be different. Like everybody's going to claim that they're the best, they're the best, they're the best. It drives me a bit nuts because you, you don't get a definitive answer. Um, I hear a lot of good things about Stevia. Stevia. I know people don't like it. So I honestly, I don't know whether I like it or I don't like it. I've actually, I've had Stevia blends. I've just never had pure Stevia to sit there and say whether I like it or not. Um, I use Lakanto monk fruit in, you know, for my white granular sugar. And for the brown, I use Truvia Sweet Complete because I can get it at my local store. And back in the last plate, it scanned at zero. I'm not sure why now it has a little bit of points. But again, I would say... Either one of those would be the ones I would recommend, but that's, again, a choice for you. I think all of the um, sugar-free options are, like, as opposed to, like, sweet and low, equal. I'm not even sure about Splenda, how that falls, but the newer ones, the monk fruits, the erythritols, seem to be better options when I hear people talk. I don't know this for fact. This is just what I've heard. So, again... Hi, D. I have a fairly physical job working with young children. I don't want to just count the steps I take because my activity is far more than that. How should I track it and how many minutes should I give it in, in an eight-hour day? Well, my first question is, do you have a tracking device? Because I would put on, if I'm, I worked with kids, so I know how how much you're putting out, girl, girl. It's a lot. I would put my little fitness tracker on something called Other. Because I have everything and there's just this other. Like when I house clean, I put my tracker on other because I'm bending, I'm stooping, I'm busy. So if you have a tracker, I would suggest while you're at work, put it on other when you're most active. I mean, I know there's timers, there's downtime. You could stop it and then restart it again. Uh, that's what I would do. Now, if you're going to track it manually, um, I'd have to look into that where you, there must be something in there. I mean, they have sex in the Weight Watchers app. And they have different kinds of intensity. I kid you not. So it might be in the app. I'd have to go and I'd have to look. But honestly, if you have a tracker, put it on others, what I'd suggest. What are the advantages and disadvantages of weighing yourself every day? Oh, that's a good one. Let me look it up before what I want to say. <clears throat> Let me see if I can find it. I wonder what, what, what Weight Watchers... Ah. I'm just going to, I'm, I'm just going to, um, tell you what I, what I think. I was going to look up the definition of weight. Weight is a variable. Weight is, and if you looked it up, it says in the dictionary, I was going to read it, but I couldn't, it just wouldn't come up for me. Weight is a variable, which means you can get weighed four or five times a day, maybe not eaten and be different. Your body is made of mostly water. All organs are made of water. Our brain is made of water. So it's definitely, um, the disadvantages, the advantages would be you could sit there and see if you're on the same slope. 
or if you're in within that what they call the Weight Watchers calls it like the window of the two pounds so that's why they give you two pounds over your goal because they know you could weigh two pounds heavier and not have really technically gained weight so it's advantages it could be just to see where you're fluctuating each day the disadvantages is if you see yourself go up does it work on your head does it sit, do you see that it's up and you're just sitting there like, I had, I was on plan. I was good. And now it says it's up. So that's my thing. If, if it's going to mess with, mess with you that way, it's not a good idea. But if you're all right with seeing it go up a little bit, yeah, I just know it's fluctu normal fluctuations. Then I would say if you're all right with it, it, for me, weighing every day was when I would see it go down, I would be like, oh, it's down. And I would honestly, it was, it's I would loosen up. I don't know what it was. Well, I'm down a bit. I could have that little extra thing. I'm going to grab a couple extra handfuls of nuts because I was down. I was down. I was down. For me, it didn't work out. So I only get weighed on Saturdays. Now, here's the thing. Getting weighed once a week. It could be up. Does it mean your week was bad? No. Were you down? Does it mean your week was excellent? No. Weight is a variable. So you just have to take it for what it is. And I know that's not the answer that people want to hear because you can't get a definitive answer on weight. Um, you just can't because it is a variable. It's kind of like blood pressure is a variable. It changes and your weight could change. If you go to the bathroom, that weight's going to go down and you just peed. Like I think of that much fluid, but you'd be surprised. So I would say if you're all right with it, then do it. And you can take like the average weight as your weekly weigh-in. That's what I suggest if that's what you want to do. All right, let's get this. I just started Weight Watchers on January 12th. I'm down six pounds, but keep losing face, keep losing, facing the same two pounds. Would you say any advice to get the scale moving in the right direction? It's just so frustrating. I just want to say how, how grateful I am. Oh, thank you. And my YouTube channel. Thank you. Um, if you're seeing this fluctuation of the same pound, like you're seeing in that same window, maybe you're eating like the same foods. Like I know I tend to do that because these are foods I like and these are foods I enjoy. Do I tend to eat too much of them? I do. I do. I'm an oats girl and I, sometimes I eat way too many oats. I would say up a little bit of more movement, not exercise. I don't ever sit there and say, go out and join the gym and you should be working out X amount of times a day. Everybody's different. I would say, which is the standard answers. And I know it sounds so cliche to say, <laughs> drink more water move more and change up what you're eating. Uh, maybe that's just, it just needs um, a little bit of push. Maybe in the foods that you're eating for me, and I addressed this last week about the carb idea for me, I know my body's not digesting carbs the way it used to. I'm older, you know, and the pancreas is getting older. So I find I have to watch my carb intake. Am I low carb? No not by any stretch of the imagination, but I am not going over a certain number of carbs. I'm keeping my carbs around 100, which low carb is under 50. So, and, and, and you'd be surprised, sometimes you're not even eating a, 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 even that much, but you know, that we talked to a couple of physicians and they were like, they think 35 carbs a meal is a great clip to look at. So I would sit there and say, look at the food you're eating, if they high in carbs, high in sugar. Remember, carbs, sugar, raise points in saturated fat, protein and fiber lower points. So you want to stick to foods that are lower in saturated fat, lower in carbs if you can. I mean, I wouldn't buy low carb bread. I think it's terrible. Maybe I would have one slice versus two slices. So that's how I make the adjustment. I don't, um, I think low carb bread is, is her. And if you, if you like it, I, I, I don't know how it's, it's, I've not got a low carb bread that I like it's, and I'm not again, sacrificing taste for points or carbohydrates because I have to like what I'm eating because when you like what you're eating you enjoy it you don't feel like you're on a diet when you're sitting there eating something because it's this you're not enjoying it and you're not going to stick to it and we want to make lifestyle changes so I would say um, up your protein watch the carbs and let's unchange up maybe what you're eating do you wish you would have started Weight Watchers sooner yes I did start it in 2013, but then I lost 54 pounds, I think. And then my mother got sick and Timmy had a seizure. He was starting high school. And I put, again, we put ourselves on the back burner and we take care of everybody else. And the weight piled back on. And then once I went back, I was even heavier than I started the first time. So I put the 55 plus on. So, yes. Do you know now that you didn't know them when you're early years of Weight Watchers? Yes, I did. I learned that 
even when I'm having a bad week and I'm just not into my plan, I still stick. I still stay. I still go get weighed. I still stick to it because I will get out of this funk and then I will not be 30, 40, 50 pounds heavier this time. I will just be two pounds heavier. And when you stick to something, even though you're not following, you're not going to gain as much weight as you would if you just quit altogether. And that's one of the things I've learned. And I, and now I've come to the conclusion, like, I was on the bandwagon of the, um, I can't think of the name of those pastas, but the ones you get at the regular grocery store, they're Protein Plus and the Barilla. They, again, still don't taste as good as regular pasta. So for me, I, I sacrifice the six points. Yes, it's only a cup, but it's enough. And I, and I have to keep telling myself that because I, I remember that I'm the one that likes the big portions. It's not, you know, I have to realize that those were way too too big for me. So, and every day, you're, you, you never stop learning. I mean, I've been here how long? I still never stop learning. You never stop learning. And you never stop, you discover so many things about yourself through this journey. And that's one of the things that I've, I've you know, I wish I wish I started this YouTube channel sooner. Yes, that was definite. I see the Clean Simple Eats carries other things besides protein powders. I have not tried anything else. Funny that you should mention that, Pat, because I just got a, it's called a Founder's Day Favorites. So I'm going to be trying more of their things. But so far, I've only had the protein powder and I've loved it. Um, really have. <clears throat> okay. There is so much talk now about tracking your macros and calories. Do you, did you do this earlier in your journey? I did not. Um, I definitely like, here's the thing with macros and calories. If you're going to count calories, you should count macros. Like I say, calories in a sense mean absolutely nothing if you don't know what's in them. That's why the Weight Watchers point system makes sense. You might not agree with it because, oh my gosh, my favorite thing is four points and things I don't like are two points. Saturated fat raises points. Fiber lowers points. Sugar raises point. So it has a balance. It balances out that food to give you a balanced number. And yes, some things might be higher. You might think that's not fair. Why is that, you know, full fat food higher and it's better for you? Technically, they say it's better for you, but is it really better for you? And if it is or it isn't, it's the points make sense because it's higher in fat and saturated fat. So yeah, it's going to read higher. Does it mean you shouldn't eat it? No. If you want it, eat it just to count for it. And you have dailies and you have weeklies. So, so it's there for you. Um, so I would say if you're going to track calories, you definitely should count, count macros, especially protein and carbohydrates. They're the two that, again can mess with your system. High protein helps you, low carbohydrates help you. But again, don't be too low because remember, you got to live the rest of your life like this. If you're like me who enjoys her fruits now, her breads, her pastas, they have carbs. And my oatmeal is about 30 some carbs a serving, maybe 40. I'm not willing to give that up. I enjoy it. It's once a week. I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but I definitely try to keep them in check. Like have, I have, like I said, I, I just mentioned in the last comment, I have a carbohydrate goal of between 100 and 110. My protein goal, I don't do it too crazy because I know I can't continue that because I'd have to be buying all kinds of things like this. I love these things. Don't get me wrong. I do. I love finding fun food finds, but I don't want to need them to reach a protein goal that I, that I, it's unrealistic for me. So I keep my protein around 80, 85, you know, around there. To get it any higher, I would be eating all these drinks. And I just don't want to do that just to reach a protein goal that I know that I can continue to maintain. That's that. So I hope that helped. I know you attend weekly meetings. When your leader coach asks for your star goal, what do you say? I don't really. I, I kind of very quiet in my group because I feel like people there know who I am. They know I have a channel. I don't want to be the reason that they come. The reason that they come should be for her. So I'm very quiet in the meeting. You'd be shocked. I don't really, you know, unless she asks me, sometimes she does defer to me for certain things, but my star goal, usually if somebody would ask me and they usually don't, I mean, I don't volunteer it. It's always to be, have a good week, be the best me I can be, do the best job I can. Because let me tell you something, I don't put unrealistic goals on myself anymore because it's, it's too daunting. It's too unrealistic and it's too hard to maintain. I live life. You know, I have things that I do. I just need to do have the best week that I can. My weeks are never perfect. 
life is imperfect. So I kind of am okay with that. I just want to have a good, decent week. And I'm happy when I have a decent week. Does the scale always reflect my week? It doesn't. Does the scale sometimes give me a good, lo you know, a loss when I don't deserve it? It does. That's what's the funny thing. Like, do you ever notice, like, when we get the, the losses we didn't expect, we don't complain. But if we get the gains we didn't expect, we complain. It comes both ways. It does. So, yes. Um, it. My go struggle is just to have a good week. Just to be the best I can be on plan for me. That's always my goal. My goal is just to, you know, that's, and it's pretty simple for me. I keep it simple because it's maintainable and it's something I don't try to put too much on myself. So many of us have lost large amounts of weight only to regain it. Then we lose a lot of weight again and gain it back once again. Over your lifetime, has this ever happened to you? Yes. If so, what has changed for you now that you no longer yo-yo? Well, staying on um stay keep going to meetings i used to leave many now i've had this you know this, the last since i've gone back since covid i've really not done much nope i haven't done much at all but i know if i leave it will be way worse at least when i go it keeps me within that little um uh, like i said i know i'm only four or five pounds over goal and it's not tragic but if i left I would be 50. It could, you gain weight like this overnight and you don't even feel it. So keeping going there keeps me somewhat accountable, at least keeps me where I'm at a good clip. Like I'm very conscious of the fact that I only have a few pounds to lose. I don't want it to make a big deal because I know people out there have a lot of weight to lose. And for me to sit here and be going, oh my God, I have five pounds. And they're going, freaking really, Denise? You're really going to complain about five pounds because I've been that girl that saw that girl do that. I'm like going, are you kidding me? You've got no idea what it's like to lose weight when you're worrying about five pounds. So I'm very cognizant of that here. I try to be anyway. Um, I don't try not to dwell on it and or make my whole video about, oh, my gosh, I got to get these five pounds off. I'm, I, my clothes feel tight. My medium clothes feel tight. Nobody gives a crap. You know, like I have to like n not focus on that. I just said, just stick with your plan. If you're a person that's online only, just stick coming to the lives. Because even if you're off plan, sitting here for that 40 minutes listening does resonate with you. So that's, you know, we all yo-yo to a point. But my yo-yo is a smaller string than the, the big string. <laughs> so my yo-yo only yo-yo like that. So that helps. You know, and this is the longest I've ever gone. I mean, I don't count COVID because we couldn't go. But the fact that I'm still going from 2018, I've never left. That's an accomplishment that I'm super proud of. How do you plan your daily menu? Do you point dinner first and then figure out the other two meals with snacks being worked in? Or you start with breakfast and work each meal into order? I personally feel breakfast is the most important meal and fuels my day. Yes, ma'am. Just curious to what others, I endeavor, I, I endeavor for six point. Yeah, you just answered my question. I do. I give <clears throat> six points for breakfast, six points for lunch, and then the rest for dinner. Now, there's many times I don't hit any of those goals. I'm under. So I just add those on to dinner. So I do not pre-plan my dinner. I usually know what kind of protein we're going to have. And then I decide what I'm going to do with it. Well, I'm going to have ground turkey tonight. Hmm, do we want chili? Do we want tacos? Do we want maybe a lasagna? Do we want maybe soup? Because we can make little meatballs out of it. Oh, we have, we have you know, chicken um, chicken breast. We're going to have the other night. We, I took chicken breast out. I decided the afternoon we're going to have chicken cheesesteaks. Because it's something different. You know, we had the... The rolls, there were only four points, and the chicken was zero, and I just had to account for the cheese and the rolls, so it was really decent, and I wound up being, like, I think, six or seven points for a chicken cheesesteak. It was delicious, too. So, yeah, I definitely do the same thing you do. I do. I, I break points down into meals, and nine times out of ten, the points come under, so I'm able to tack that on to dinner, or maybe I could throw a snack in in the morning, like if I had a lower point breakfast, and I'm a little bit peckish. I don't go to my next meal hungry. And a lot of people don't believe in snacking. And I'm not sure why. Because snacking is quite normal. It's normal to grab food. Like when it becomes abnormal to grab food, there's a problem. <laughs> there's a problem. So yeah, so I definitely like, and we're not talking 10 point snack. We're talking a one or two point snack. You know, you have some hummus. You have some nut butter. And I love using those uh, powdered peanut butters with apples and bananas. And that's what I usually gravitate towards. But yes. 
So your snacks come out of weeklies. My snacks seem to come out of if I didn't use those points for that meal. Or weeklies. I mean, like I said, don't ever be afraid to go into those weeklies. Please don't. Do you have a particular site you gather factual or accurate in nutritional information from? I decided to start looking in, at fiber and protein information listed on the WW Tracker site. I had no sugar added, Del Monte diced pears cut up zero points, but it showed 30 grams of protein. I'm pretty sure that info was a little inaccurate, a lot of inaccurate. Um, that's, yeah, well, there's a site that, um, let me grab it since we, we're, yeah, we're, we're good on time. Um, I, I know I signed up to be on it and it was, I'm doing that nutritional class, which uh, I don't know I'm ever going to get back to because I can't see. <laughs> it's horrible. Um, it's called, and this is just something if anybody can go on and, and create a profile, it's called USDA because here's the thing, what I want, a few things I've learned so far on this, on this, um, course is anybody can give you a site for something, you know, there's always a site that's going to back up what they say. Which I didn't realize that I feel, oh, if it's a site, it's got to be accurate. No, there is. Everybody can have a site to back up what they say, which is interesting. That's what this thing said. So this one was the one that they recommended, which is a general site called the USDA MyPlate. I know you've heard of MyPlate. It is myplate.gov. I will link it down in the description box. There's some really interesting information on there. And I, it's just, it, it's, like I said, it's not one way. It's just a general information. That's what I loved about it. And I haven't really delved into it too much, but it might, you know, <clears throat> healthy eating on a budget, recipe of the month. It might be something that you, and it's free. I don't think it, they charge you anything. I think I've lost, I think I created an account. Let me see if I can log in. Pretty sure I created an account. Yeah, I did. But I thought it was really good information so i will definitely share that it, it it shows you fruit and vegetables grains and protein on your plate because one of the other classes i took said your plate should be half vegetables that's a lot of vegetables that's a lot it's half vegetables 25 percent protein and 25 percent grains that's what they said it's you know so there, this, here's one thing I'm interested in. It's a new, nutrition information for, so you could put in a lot of things. It's a great, great resource. So I will link that. And if you guys want to go on there and, you know, find your information. Like I said, we all are looking at different information. So it's kind of nice to have someplace that at least doesn't have an agenda. Like, because many, there's the agenda people. There's the people who, this is what I follow. This is my agenda now. I just don't go for that. I don't go for all of a sudden doing 180s on our, our journey and I don't eat this, I don't eat that, and this is all I eat now. I go for everything is on the plate. Everything in moderation. There's no food inherently bad. You can't sit there and say, I don't eat that because we don't like that. We don't like this. We don't like that. It's, it's food, you know, and it's in life. Are you going to be able to sit there and pick and choose? You know, you sit there, you just make the best informed decision and you don't need to have a lot of it. You know, like that's the funny thing. High fiber foods in my repertoire. Do I have any high fiber foods in my repertoire? Fruit's a very high fiber food. Anything fruit related is usually high in fiber. High in sugar as well, because we know fruit is not, but it's natural sugar. Always remember that when you sit there and you say, oh my God, that has X amount of sugar, but it's natural sugar. It's not added sugar. So that's always important when you look at a label to go with added sugar because some of the things occur naturally, which is natural. So I would sit there. I don't poof, poof things because it has natural sugar in it. Like there's a lot of those um, dried fruits that everybody's eating now. The, and some of them have added sugar. Some of them don't. But yes, they will scan as points, even though it's just fruit because the drying process in, you know increases the sugar amount. Again, it's still occurring in my mind naturally. So I don't go crazy like that. I don't sit there and have an eight ton bag of it either, but I don't sit there and put a couple of tablespoons. It's going to hurt, make or break anything. Like think about that. How much are you eating of that food? A couple of tablespoons here and there. Like you have to keep things in perspective. And I think a lot of times we just, you know, we, and we want to blame food. <clears throat> I gained weight because of the food I ate this week. It was all sodium. Sodium does retain water, yes. But if you know that that food is high in sodium, you should be drinking. I'm going to be honest with you. If you're eating something like, say, bacon. A bacon is what came to my mind, which is high in sodium. If you're eating bacon for breakfast. There's nothing wrong with it. But 
have a couple glasses of water in that breakfast with that breakfast. You know, definitely water is comes in handy for flushing out sodium. And most people who take water pills are supposed to be drinking. My mother never understood that. She says she was retaining fluid or her legs were horrible. And the doctor put her on, you know, a diuretic. And I said, are you drinking? Well, why would I drink? I'm trying to get rid of fluid. No, drinking helps flush fluid. I know it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't. Unless you're on a restricted diet, because like my dad, he wind up having really bad heart failure. So they limited him to his fluid, but they weren't limiting her. I right? said, so limiting you. They limit daddy because he couldn't have X amount of fluid. And unless your doctor's telling you, and let's preface this with saying, make sure you go for your yearly checkup. I say they're thinking of this every video, your insurance without deductible lets you go for a yearly checkup. And if you've not been to the doctor, in so if you're embarrassed to go to the doctor because of your weight, that's all the more reason to pick up that phone and make an appointment. It, it doesn't, it, it, you deserve that yearly physical. You're entitled to it. Do not let that pass by. Let the doctor decide what you need. You know, don't let me decide, you know, <laughs> but let your doctor. And I say that all the time. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nutritionist. I am not a, I am a medical assistant though, but I say to you all the time, check with your doctor. Like I wouldn't sit there and tell you to go out and exercise. I'm not your physician. I don't know what kind of shape you're in. I would never tell any of my people to say, go out and exercise. You know, you can't because I don't know what kind of shape you're in. And that's not the best advice. My advice is always get a physical check with your doctor for everything. He knows your body best. Denise doesn't. But yeah, high fiber foods um, definitely would be fruitish type things. Um, and it's funny because like you read labels and you see like oh wow nine times out of ten if it's a low point thing like like that the fiber's high the protein's high that's how it's low point like how do they get these things low point remember we'll say it again fiber lowers points saturated fat raises points sugar raises points and protein lowers points that's why the point system works we might not like the idea that something we love that is technically good for us is seven points well because it's seven points because there's either sugar or fat in there are they bad for us well you know they're natural but that's why the points are high should i not have that no that's why you have points and maybe being seven points, you're not going to have two of those. So I feel like that's why they do that. If it's something that's really like, like my, remember my coconut nog that I was having a fun time with, they don't want you to have a whole freaking cup of that. So they make it high in points that you're only going to have one serving and check your serving size of everything. Everything has a serving size. That was one of the things I've learned late uh probably in the last two years maybe since i started this channel about serving sizes did i know that making my journey mm -mm. never never paid attention to it everything has a serving size look at the labels labels are important and take the time to read them and learn about them and go on the um my plate and do a little research you know learning is empowering we're never too old to learn and when you are empowered, good things happen. You can make decisions for yourself. You can make decisions on the on the fly when you're when you've read and educated yourself. And the information's out there. Take advantage of it, but be careful because, like I said, there are certain things that are just skewed to certain things. And, and I never really realized that. I because well, she has a she she posted a link to a website. Sure, there's always websites that you know to the left. And there's websites to the right. I want to be in the middle. That's where I like to sit. I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. I just want to be here. Centered and balanced. Balanced living, balanced eating, just eating in moderation. And that is the key to success. If you didn't know that, I'm telling you now. Keeping the serving sizes, honestly, you will see big results just doing that. Well, that is it for the comments. Thank you all for submitting them. I hope I answered them. Some of them, like I said, I don't answer things that I don't know and I defer because I don't know everything. 
I don't. It's just stuff that I've learned along the way. So I thank you so much for enjoying Wednesday with me. You guys seem to really like this. And it's fun that you guys get to contribute. It's not about me. It's about you. And that's why I love it. That's why I love doing this and doing the, your questions answered. Because it's fun. And I it, honestly, it just it keeps me on my toes. And, you know, good place I like to be. Keep me on my toes. So I'm going to go back to filming my tomorrow's vlog so you will see what i did this morning tomorrow on my day in the life of d oh we have some fun things going on what do you see my breakfast my breakfast was fantastic and again something totally different that i have never had before but yet the combination worked and it was delicious you'll have to wait till tomorrow to see that if you're interested in what i ate for breakfast it was quite delicious and it was five points so oh, you had a five point breakfast i did i had two points of avocado Dang right I did. This cause it's again, does it mean you shouldn't have it? No. This way to measure it and I accounted for it. So that's it for me. If you enjoy these videos, give them a thumbs up. If you haven't yet hit that subscribe button, join us here at Dish with D. We are slaying our weight loss one pound at a time. You are welcome to join us here. And if you think somebody could benefit from this content, this is a great video, D. I loved it. Share it with a Facebook group, with your Weight Watchers meeting. I have so many Weight Watcher people, Weight Watcher guides and coaches that are members of my Facebook group. That's what happens when you're open and honest with people. Good people come. So welcome to everybody. And I will dish with you tomorrow. I'll see you for the vlog. Have a great rest of your day. And you can leave in the comment below if you have a question for next week's Wednesday Wisdom for Weight Loss. See you then.